back again. This is Will Johnson of Will TJ Realty. Today I'm going to go over five things you shouldn't do when buying a house. Number one, never change jobs. So when you're buying a house, most people, unless you're going to buy your house cash, is going to use traditional financing. When you use traditional financing, it's going to be FHA or conventional, but somebody's going to loan you some money and you're going to pay a mortgage on your house. So when they do that, if they're going to loan you money on the house, they have to ensure that you're not going to not pay the payments. They have to ensure that the payments are going to be uh, on time every time. They have to ensure real accuracy. So what they usually do is they want to make sure you get a proof of income from your job so they can show that you're working there and they want to know every source of income that you have. So uh, one time when I was getting my house, I had two jobs. I worked one place and I had a self-employment job. So I had to stop uh, taking money from my self-employment job, or at least I couldn't put it into my checkings account because they didn't know where the money was coming from. And since they didn't know where the money was coming from, it was a problem. So that being said, if you switch jobs, that you can just imagine what that would do if you were trying to buy a house. So you have to stay accurate. So if you're about to get a new job, it's probably better to stay where you're at in the house that you're, you're in or stay renting a house somewhere or an apartment somewhere and then get the job. After you get the job, then you could uh, go to buying a house because then it won't be a lot of confusion with you switching jobs. So. They're monitoring your bank uh, account for the 30 days or however long it takes for you to close in your house. After that, they don't they don't mess with you. But while that time is going on, they monitor your bank account and they want to know where every dollar comes from. So with that being said, do not quit your job. Number two, don't make any large purchases. So like I said, they're monitoring your bank account and they're, they want to know what's coming in and what's going out. So if you make a large purchase, let's say you go buy a car, let's say you go buy some furniture or something that's really big, they're gonna wanna know where the money went to. So it's best to just cooperate with them and don't buy anything because it's not just like you can tell them. You have to write a written statement justifying where it came from and it's, it gets into all kinds of things. So trust me, this is the most frustrating part of buying a house is when you're being qualified for your mortgage and while they're dealing with the underwriters and seeing if all the ducks are lined up and seeing if you can move into your house. So during this waiting period is the most frustrating time. It's the most time where uh, people get kind of get discouraged when buying a house. But don't give up because it's gold at the end of the tunnel. Your reward is at the end of the tunnel. Good things come to people who wait. Good things come to people who are willing to work hard and stick to it. So, number three, don't allow any credit inquiries after your loan approval. What this means is after you've been approved for your loan and you're gonna, and you know you're gonna use that loan, don't allow any uh, credit inquiries. So if you go to get a car or some type of down payment on something and they run your credit, credit inquiries bring your credit score down. So then they're going to be wondering why your credit score is going down. Like I said, this can be a very frustrating uh, deal while you're buying a house waiting to get uh, into the house and for the underwriters to get everything situated. So just try to cooperate with them the best, they, uh, the best you can. Try to cooperate with them the best you can. This is the most frustrating thing I find that people go through. The last buyer I was working with, they were getting really frustrated with this process. When I did it, I was getting really frustrated with this situation because they want so much information from you. They want to uh, 
uh, check stuff. They want your W two forms. They want your uh, your tax return summaries. They want a lot of information from you. So just try to cooperate with them the best uh, you can. Like I said, these people are loaning you money, so they have to make sure you are who you say you are and that you're making the money that you say you're making so that they can feel comfortable enough to loan the money to you. Number four, don't ignore lender requirements. So the lenders are gonna require several things for you during this process. When they require these things, uh, some of these things consist of, they wanna see your W-2 forms, they wanna see your check stubs, they wanna see uh, your tax returns. So they're gonna to wanna to see a lot of things. I think when I did it, they wanted to see my tax returns and my tax return transcripts, which I had to get from the IRS. It depends on who you go through, on what they're gonna want, but this process can be very, very frustrating but just cooperate with them. Another thing that I see, or at least that's something that I did was I was really fast, so I had everything lined up and I sent them information before they needed the information and they ended up waiting on me to send this information because they didn't check on, they didn't check on it when I sent it to them earlier and what happened was it ended up taking a little longer. So it's best to have everything that you're gonna need Talk to your realtor or your real estate agent and find out everything you're gonna need, have it ready to present to them when they ask, but I wouldn't send it ahead of time unless they ask you to send it ahead of time because that can end up delaying time also like what it did with me. Point number five, do nothing alone. So you don't wanna do all of this alone. As I just explained to you guys all the steps that I explained, it can be very, very, very frustrating trying to do all of these things by yourself. So it's best to have your real estate agent with you. And also, most of the times, the lenders are gonna be more comfortable talking to the real estate agent, even though they're gonna be talking to you because they deal with the real estate agent all the time and the real estate agent speaks a language. The real estate agent is kind of like the, like the person that communicates between you and them. It's the person who uh, is able to present your feelings and your opinions to them and, and vice versa. So when I was getting my house, I was frustrated and I, sometimes when I got too frustrated with the lender, I would call the real estate agent and the real estate agent was able to talk to the lender and uh, get the lender to understand what I was asking for. Because some things I didn't know how to ask it or why they were asking for certain things because I don't speak as that language. Like I described in one of my previous videos, real estate is its own language. So since real estate is its own language, it's hard for us to understand everything that they're talking about. So this has been Will Johnson. This has been the five things you should not do when buying a house. Thank you. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave me a like, comment, and share the video. And if you're on my YouTube, subscribe. Thank you. See you next time. Peace. Will Johnson here. If you're in the Houston area and you need real estate advice or if you're looking to buy, sell, or rent, just click the link below or give us a call. We'll be happy to help. Goodbye. See you next time.